Life can be incredibly overwhelming, but fortunately we have systems to make it a little bit more manageable. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about how you can use lists to fight overwhelm, getting things out of your head and into the real world, as well as to-do lists, one of the longest standing task management systems. And I'll wrap it all up with some tips and tricks for how you can do these things on both paper and digitally. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Mark, if you haven't been here yet, thanks so much for stopping by. I wanted to say thank you. We just surpassed 700 subscribers. The typing video really took off. So thank you everybody who's stuck by and gotten some value out of these videos. I I hope that today I can bring another one to you. Lists can sound kind of dreadful at the start, maybe even a little tedious, but keep in mind that they've been around for a long time and there's a reason for that. There's a reason that new apps and formats are coming out every day just because of lists. So the first thing I want to talk about is what I'm calling the finite list. Assuming we're not speaking from a mathematical point of view, all lists that we create have an ending. And the concept is quite simple. Oftentimes we can feel very overwhelmed by what's going on. It could be life issues, school, just whatever's going on. It can all swim around in our head and feel like so much is bearing down on us. It would be great if we could just offload these thoughts and worries to someone else or something else. And oftentimes a list can do that. So when you're feeling overwhelmed or even just now, if you feel like you have a lot going on, make a list. Sit down for a few minutes, write out everything that comes to mind. What is on your mind? Take one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, just keep writing. If you need to think about what's on your mind, you're getting somewhere. The important thing to note is that when you get to the end of this list, you get to the end of the list. There is an ending to all of these things. Feeling like school is overbearing. Last week I had a fairly rough week, which is part of the reason why a video didn't get out last Saturday, but I just felt like I had so much going on. All of a sudden, all of this stuff was happening. I felt like my classes were picking up and they were, and I made a very, very simple list. It's five items and it's my five assignments that were going on. Then I took those items and I broke them down into more manageable pieces, and which is what I'm gonna get to with to-do lists in just a minute. Now going even a little bit more abstract, there could just be things weighing on you that you don't realize are weighing on you. This is something that journaling can do incredibly well, but if you don't wanna journal, just make a list. Simple, simple list. If it comes to mind, put it on the list. A waiter gave you food and they said enjoy it and you said you too and you're thinking about that still three and a half years later, put on the list. This concept is a little hard to show, but the idea is that we're taking things that are floating around in our head that we make to be such a big deal and we put them on paper and we put them into the physical world. This way we can help boil down what's going on in our minds because oftentimes we make these worlds in our head. We think, what if, what if this, what if that? And just making it physical can help us have a more objective look at it. Take all these things in your head. If you're feeling overwhelmed, make a list, write it down. Graphics homework, that's due. Oh my God, that conversation I had with someone, I haven't spoken to them in a few days. Are they okay? Are they mad? Write it down. And with everything you write down, just remind yourself the things are finite. Whatever's going on in the world, there are finite things. Amongst all this inconcise wording, perhaps a good way to wrap this up would be by saying, once you have these things on your list, you can then go through them one by one. Once we have all these things out of our head, we can kind of mentally tell ourselves, okay, you know what? The first thing on the list, operating systems lab. You look at the prompt again, maybe you think it's a bit easier than you thought it was. Maybe you have an idea of how you can break it down. Move on to the next thing. 10 things down the line. Man, there's this book I really wanted to read, but I haven't had time to read it. It's been stressing me out. Okay, maybe I'll put aside time for it reading tonight or perhaps this weekend if I can make the time. This concept of delegation, of delegating what's on your mind to this simple, simple list can be super helpful. Now, this same concept applies to journaling. And if you're someone who journals, you might already realize this, but making these lists can be just so simple and help us have a more objective view about everything that's going on. And again, the lists help remind us that whatever's going on is finite. I'm still a little mentally exhausted, so that might have been so incohesive and I apologize. The big picture is that if you have a lot going on, just write bulleted points of everything that's going on, put it into the external world, just get it out of your head so you can clear up space. That's all it is. Last week when I was stressed out, I thought, you know, so many things are happening. Oh my God, what's going on? And I ended up writing out my school tasks and how I'm behind in rushing and behind in art and behind on my game. And I ended up coming up with some pretty good plans. And that is going to be our segue into why to-do lists can be so fantastic. I used to be pretty against to-do lists and calendars and everything just because I was like, oh, I can keep track of it in my head. That's fine. But when you list everything out you have for the day, you can look at it and make a choice from there. This can help avoid something like analysis paralysis, where it feels like you have so much to do today. And then you write out all the tasks you have and whether or not that's 10 tasks, 20 tasks, maybe even 30 tasks. If you have 30 tasks, you should find what you don't need to prioritize on that list and push them off for later. But it's, it's finite. The things you have to do in a day are 
finite. You don't think, oh, I'll do the operating system lab. Maybe that's too hard. Maybe I'll go read. Maybe I'll do this, this, this. And then you're back at the operating systems lab. And by that time, you've lost a few hours on YouTube or Reddit or something. In game design terms, to-do lists are elegant. Simple, clear, and effective. They're very simple to make. You have a lot going on today, write it down. Eat breakfast, get dressed, shower, work on operating systems lab, and just go at it. They're clear. You're not going to be writing very verbose tasks. You're, you know, it's not going to be a whole paragraph taking up one bullet point. And lastly, to-do lists are effective. They are effective for so many reasons, partially because they are simple and clear. I'll talk about this more with the paper system, but to-do lists allow us to iterate our tasks. You barf everything out onto a to-do list and you can sort what's important, what's not. And then when you sit down to do some work, you have got to just pick something off the list. And perhaps that's the most prioritized thing, perhaps not. Looking back at the work you've done as well is super motivational. You look back and you say, oh, I've done four out of seven tasks today. That's fantastic. As opposed to in your head, you get a little bit of imposter syndrome and don't quite feel like you've done a lot that day. And lastly, to-do lists allow us to break things down. So as an example, um, I, when I got overwhelmed, I wrote down a bunch of things for school. I was like, oh my God, like there's so much stuff going on in my classes right now. They're picking up. What do I have to do? And I wrote down five things. Semantics homework for uh, a paper that I have to write, graphics homework, uh, a reading, and my operating systems lab. And I realized, you know, that's just five things. In my head, I'm making these out to be a much bigger thing than they are. What I could do is I could make a to-do list for every item on that list. <laughs> And you know, that's a really simple list, but it allows me to take a step back, not have to think about all these things going on in my head and I say, okay, I have five things that I have to get done. I have a work session coming up. Which one do I want to do? I end up crunching out semantics homework 04 because it's easy. Then when I sit down to do operating systems lab, I'm still feeling overwhelmed. Let's write down all the things that I have to do for the operating systems lab. And you can keep breaking things down like this. And so when I was going through my operating systems lab, LS command, done. PWD command, done. Fork and weight handled correctly, pretty sure done. And checking it off just feels so good. Trello, Notion, Todoist, all these systems exist so that we can get things out of our mind and into reality. It frees up mental space and mental energy so that we can focus on one thing at a time. We can leave to apps and notebooks what isn't urgent right now. When you have a to-do list, clean the house, go grocery shopping, get a haircut, which I desperately need. We can pick one task and focus solely on that. We don't have to think, oh my God, when am I gonna get this done? Oh my God, when am I gonna go food shopping? Oh my God, when am I gonna go get a haircut? It's on the list. We're just gonna focus on one thing right now. And to-do lists help you do just that. One thing by one thing. Now, maybe my bulleted script and incohesive rambling combined have somehow persuaded you that you should take 30 seconds and make a to-do list for tomorrow. Quick digression, one of the best things that I learned was that when we're planning for a day, we should plan it the day before. It just makes life a lot easier, takes off a mental load in the morning. Anyway, when we make these lists, we have a few ways to go about doing them. We can use a digital app or we can use a paper system. I'm a fan of using both. And a to-do list app that I use every minute of every day is is Todoist. Uh, this is not sponsored or anything, by the way, in case anyone thinks I'd be sponsored. When I first installed Todoist, I wasn't a big fan, but then I just started diving into it. And that's kind of the whole thing with these productivity management tools. Oftentimes we don't use 100% of the tools they offer us, and that's okay. If at least one part of a productivity tool or app or whatever helps you, then you're making the most of it. The, the main mechanic of Todoist, or how I see it in my eyes, is the ease with which you can put in tasks and have them automatically sorted by category, filter, their priority, etc. When I first started using Todoist, the only thing I did was if I had an idea in my head, I would write it down and put a date on it. You can write tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, every other day, and stuff like that for repeating tasks, which are another great feature of Todoist. You know, I started doing this and then I got more into it and I realized I could make projects. So I could say, okay, record list making video on October 14th, pound sign, lifestyle videos. Gra submit graphics homework every Tuesday by 7 p.m. P1 for priority one. One of the best things about this is that you can literally forget about stuff because Todoist will automatically handle it for you. You could go into your calendar app and scroll to Thursday and schedule something in. Sure, schedule in a repeating event, same effect. You can also put uh, subcategories within categories and I think that's fantastic. It's just very aesthetically pleasing and it's just, it's very elegant. Although adding comments, attaching files and filters have been very nice. I survived on Todoist for about two and a half years without shelling out the, you know, three bucks a month for premium. I could go off about Todoist for a while, just like a lot of people go off about Notion. So I'll stop there. And if digital apps or productivity application software doesn't really fit your vibe, 
Paper systems are, there are so many of them. The tips I'm gonna recommend for making a paper to-do list system kind of come from everywhere, such as Todoist features or the bullet journal method. Uh, when you're making your to-do list, make priorities, absolutely. You know, if it's due tomorrow or if it's a big task, then set it for a high priority. This way, as you're going down the list and you find that you don't really have time, you can't make time for one of your lower priority tasks, you can put it off tomorrow or the day after and then make it priority one. You can also divide a list in this fashion. You can say, okay, I'm going to make my to-do list. Oh, look at this art practice. I had to draw 15 primitive skeletons from the side. I didn't get to this the past five days when I meant to. We're going to make this priority one tomorrow. Sub lists are great. Have your major tasks, then have subtasks within those to help you keep track of them as you go along. And lastly, this is sort of a bullet journal type of thing. When you make your checkboxes, create little symbols for yourself. For example, let's say you want to read a full chapter of a book today. If you do that, check it off. If you do some reading but don't make the full chapter, put a little plus sign. Perhaps you didn't get to it, put a circle or put nothing at all. To symbolize what's priority one and priority two, instead of you know making two separate lists, put little stars next to priority ones and you check off those stars. Kind of what you do with these symbols is up to you, but that's the beauty of paper systems is that you have so much freedom with it. You're not restricted by apps or whatever. You have a pen and you have paper and you can draw whatever you want. Now, paper ideas are endless. So if you're someone who makes to-do lists on paper or perhaps you get some value from this video, definitely leave a comment down below because I'd love to hear your ideas. All of my ideas are pulled from all these different places. I find what works for me and then I just kind of form it into my own thing and I try to generalize it again when I make these videos. So if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, get stuff out of your head, put it on paper so that you can identify it externally and work with it externally, dealing with one thing at a time. We can get so overwhelmed about the smallest things because we're human. That's just part of how we function, unfortunately. So amongst this whole ramble of a video, I'm sorry that it was so trailing and digressive. I do hope you got some value out of it. The most important part of lists though, is that when we have stuff in our mind and we put it on a list, we make those things tangible. And with that tangible list, we have something external we can look back on so that we don't have to rely on just our minds. And yeah, that's about it. So drop a comment if you got some value. I'd love to hear how you plan on implementing this to-do list, or perhaps you implement a to-do list or you know, these finite lists of mind barf and you find it really helps you, I'd love to hear that. So come back in a few days, a few weeks, let me know how it works out. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other videos here. Going nicely with to-do lists is a video on analysis paralysis. And here's a playlist of some other productivity tips and tricks. But anyway, without further ado, have a good one. Keep making those lists, fight overwhelm. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. Peace out. Can be handled.